Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Nerdcore Podcast. This is your one and only source for all things nerdy, whether it be video games, comic books, TV shows, movies, whatever you need. We got your back. I am your host, as always. My name is Matt Hedrick, and here with me, always excited to be here, but probably not, that's Mr. Chad Porto. Never excited to be here. I'm doing this as a favor to you. I've always been doing this as a favor to you. The minute you find one other friend, I get to retire this fucking gig. Just, just... Quite frankly, I'm surprised you're still my friend after this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not great. It's not great, no lie. There are some right, definite Anna. perks, but some definite downfalls. The fact that you said that there's even perks gives me Sometimes you buy me shit. <laughs> so, like I said... So, the usage of me is is the benefit. Oh, okay. No, right. I'm not... So the actual, no, no, the actual no. definitive qualities, though. No, no, no. I'm not using you because that would be an expectation of you buying me shit. Because you don't always buy me shit. But when you do, it makes it worth it. <laughs> There's no usage here. It's, it's like when you throw a, a piece of fruit to a prisoner who's only had bread and water. You're not expecting the fruit. But you're going to eat that shit up because you know it's going to be a rarity. <laughs> and you, oh you fucking God. earned that fruit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Your analogies know no bounds, man. I'm telling you. Well, I've been having a weird week. I ended up liking a TikTok song, and I don't know what to do with myself. I feel like this is how people like feel when they find out they might be gay. Like, oh no! Like I saw a man button that that got me going. I listened to a TikToker. And it wasn't what, bad. Do you the Todd now? What the fuck happened? <laughs> no, the Todd was always into both. Fair point. He was just he was just his own thing. He 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 wasn't gay or bi or straight. He was just the Todd. A Bella Port song is staying with me, man. <laughs> it's not even, it's not great. It's not good, mm-hmm. but it's not bad. It's just one of those, it's an earworm. It, it just drills in. <clears throat> the problem is it's only two minutes long, and there's only about a 90 seconds worth of, like, lyrics. And there's only, like, two verses <laughs> and two, two choruses. So, so like, Dude. it's not great. <laughs> but it fucking stays with you. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. Speaking the of word, things, the worst kind of double-edged sword. <laughs> speaking of things, I hated Resident Evil Seven. I know there's a f- picture of eight on the on the screen, but we're not talking about mm. eight necessarily. So, I did the same thing I did last time with Seven. I uh, I went ahead and, and watched the game and spoiled the story, and I was like, oh, okay. I don't mind how they did this. I'll never be into first-person Resident Evil games. Like you, you cannot convince me that these are good games because they're not. But like one of the big issues I had with the first, uh, the first first person game, uh, I shouldn't say the first because like there's been like six, with seven, I don't think it has a name. It's just Resident Evil Seven. Um, was that one the, the lack of enemies that was dumb, that was terrible. But the other one was it made no fucking sense. Like Ethan cuts off, it gets his arm cut off, and and has it reattached, and you know he's fucking constantly like sewing bits of himself on. I'm just like this is fucking stupid. Well, I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh yeah, like his his wife becomes possessed and like hacks off his arm. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, but then he okay. just like attaches it and pours liquid on it, and then his arm works again. I'm like, that's fucking stupid. That's so because fucking because stupid. Be- because that's how a reattachment process works for limbs, <laughs> apparently. Well, Resident Evil Eight's like, yeah, we heard you. That was stupid. Explanation time. So, spoiler alert. I don't know if you want to hear this, Matt, but you're going to be forced to because there's no way you can mute me. (laughs) I don't really care. So it's revealed in Resident Evil 8 that Ethan, the main protagonist of 7, is technically undead. Huh. Interesting. So in the opening throws of the game, when you're trying to get Mia out of the house, um, Papa Baker punches you and knocks you out saying, Welcome to the family, boy. And you just, cacao. And you're all like, Apparently that killed you. In the game, like that punch in the opening throws of the seventh game kills you. But the mold a a punch. Jesus. Yeah. The the mold, well, he is infused with Resident Evil power, so like duh. But the mold okay. that was generating all the powers and, and, and the molded and all that in the in the game infects Ethan, bringing him back to life. So when his wife later cuts off his arm and he just reattaches it with liquid and shit. That's all he needed to do because the mold had, had made him be able to develop regenerative regenerative powers. Regenerative powers? Refrigerator powers. He got freezer powers. 
So is this on along the lines of something like like a, the symbiote stuff from like Spider Man Venom type thing? I don't know, not really. Uh, it just it, okay. it, it, it it's more like Wolverine healing factor. Okay, got you. The mold is like in his body, not not like a suit. So that's explained in in the eighth game, and I'm like, huh. Well, that makes me hate the seventh game less. <laughs> <laughs> And like obviously Last, like, really? like 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 the big twist of like Chris Redfield's a villain. He's not. <laughs> uh. But he killed your wife, but she wasn't your wife. <laughs> your real wife is actually captured in a, in a different castle. Sorry, Ethan Winter Ario, your wife is in another castle. Boom, God. made that work. Uh, so yeah, like, status quo, which is fine. Uh, you know, the idea of turning Chris into a villain was a dumb idea. And they knew that, so they didn't do it. Um, the game looks great. Uh, I don't know how it plays. I haven't played it yet. I've only watched some stuff and read some stuff. But I, yeah, this is what it is. I wasn't, I wasn't too disappointed with that little twist. I've, I've heard it's very much more action heavy. Yes, like, it's I think Resident Evil Four. Too, though. No, Seven mm. really wasn't. Mm. I would say Seven is a lot more in line with Two. Uh, but. Eight is more in line with four. So, do you mind like the action heavy approach to these type of games, or would you prefer to just be kind of more like straight survival horror type? Uh, like, I like six. Don't even fucking at me. I'm fine with that. Six was good, mm-hmm. but I didn't like five. So, I think there needs to be some elements to it. But I, 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 I I'm, I'm not a huge fan of being afraid. Like I don't do mm. the anxiety well. Like I, 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 and it takes a lot for for me to get there. But because again, you gotta remember, I play these games muted because I'm always multitasking. So like that big giant trench coated milady fucker, Mister X, just kind of jumping out of nowhere. Who's that jumping out the sky? R E Y Mysterio, Mister Xio. He's gonna knock mm. your head off. And ah, I forget the lyrics of that. But anyway, um. So, I don't know. It just depends. If it's a good game, I'll like it. If it's not a good game, I won't like it. Like, 7, didn't like it. I thought it was boring as shit. 6, loved it, <laughs> even though it really wasn't scary. It's like, I don't know. Pick your poison. <laughs> I mean, I could go I could go either route. Like, like there were some people who were disappointed in the remake of 3. I played it, and I actually enjoyed it to a degree because yeah, I, think it, I think it was more or less for the linear aspect of it, too, with the action. I felt like it was, like, for me, it was paced... In the in a way where I could actually complete it, and I have to look around for everything, you know. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if eight is the same way, I might give it a shot. But eight know. eight plays just like four does, except it's in first person. So if you liked Resident Evil Four, Leon goes to Europe, and uh, you might enjoy number eight. Hmm. Okay. National Lampoon. I to give that a Leon shot. Leon eh? goes to Europe. I forgot what they're called. What are the what are the the Plagas, Plagas, the Las Plagas? Leon goes to fuck the Las Plagas. All righty then. Yeah, it's a crazy fucking story. Redonkulous. Mm-hmm. All right, so you 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 picked up some Zelda comics from the old Nintendo Powers, yes? I did. It was um, I at my local com- at my local comic shop. There was an actual compilation like book that had all of the old issues of the Zelda comic book in together in one package, and I, it was like twenty bucks or something like that. And I I never really had Nintendo Power as a kid. Like I never really subscribed to it. I might have read an issue or two for like the because I know they had like the maps in them and stuff like that. So I did that from time to time. But there was a few different comics that had full releases for like a year or so of the of the you know subscription to the magazine, and Zelda was one of them. So I decided to pick it up, and it's interesting the liberties they take, especially in here having Link talk throughout almost the entire thing, is a little weird, because mm-hmm. I believe in the original game and most games he doesn't say anything. <clears throat> And he kind of, I'm not, I, I hate to hate on him like this, but they kind of make him come across as a little bit of an idiot and a wimp. Well, you got to remember, degree. they're and trying to appeal to okay. children. That's true, too. That's true. Yeah, I should take that into account. But that's the strange thing, too, because there are points in this where there is at least, maybe it might, it might not be blood, but it looked like it to me. 
like certain fights he would do and then the enemy's laying there and it looks like there's actual blood and this is Nintendo. So I don't know I don't know how much they're catering to children if they're doing stuff like that. Um but I do like I do like the flashy visual style to this. This is just this is heavy heavy dosed in the old school style of comics, at least the ones that I would remember because I don't I haven't read much, you know, in in that world like pre nineties, you know, even for you know what you could obtain at the time. But I did I did enjoy this. I I, I like I like all the different action scenes. It, the pace is very very quick. It, it just gives you the highlights and stuff like that. Um, uh, the only thing, like I said, the only thing I'll say, my hang up, my hang up was just, my, was just Link. Like, there were certain things, like you would, you know, he would do the, you know, in a game he would do the heroic thing, you know, but for some reason in every part of this he's messing up to some degree and something else has to save him. You know, I just don't, I don't think I can connect with something like that. But for twenty bucks, it's a, it's a fairly decent read, and I want to see. I know there's at least one other comic from Nintendo Power out there that it that um, this company Viz Media put into a collection, and it's the Mario Adventures. But I'm not so much invested in that as I heard there was also a Star Fox one, and I really want to see that one get put into a compilation because I'm a bit I'm more of a fan of that that type of game. Um, but as far as as far as it goes, yeah, I'm. I found it. I found it interesting, and I've never really dove into that series in terms of comic book before. And I know I think there's also manga for it, from what I've heard. And there's all the different stories. Like I think there's a Ocarina of Time one and a Majora's Mask one. And I might have to give that a. Sh- I might have to give that more of a shot because Ocarina of Time is my. Um, actually, no, that that'd be bumped down to my third now favorite Zelda game. That used to be my favorite, but when we started reviewing and I did link to the past and then I played on links awakening. Those are my top two now. So I might have to doubt uh, deep dive after the, the reading this and go into the whole series, you know? So what else? Um, so we're moving on from the comics then, right? Mm hmm. Okay, well, I'm gonna jump into some uh, couple of movies I've seen uh, just a couple of days ago. Another trip to the uh, drive-in theater, and I guess we're gonna do some uh, forehead movie reviews here. And um, the first one I saw was Spiral. This is a spin, uh, I guess, a spin-off story from the uh, from in the Saw franchise. Got uh, Chris Rock in it, and Samuel L. Jackson's also in this movie. <coughs> And I liked it for about, I'd say, 75 to 80% of it. And to understand right away when you're watching this is that I don't know how you feel about downtime in movies where in between, like, the more tense parts, there's where they kind of reflect on what's going on in the, in the movie. And, you know, you can kind of take a break and then get right back to the action, you know? This movie never had that. This movie was like 100% full bore for the whole thing, which is fine, but I would have liked a break in between. But then the ending, like, completely, but be- like, at least to me, betrayed everything the film was hoping to be. And kind of like, it, because it, I think, because what you have to understand about this franchise, at least from what I understand of Saw in general, is that they want the the dude wants to play a game and he gives you an option to live or die and if no matter what you choose you're always going to die you know so why at the end would you ever choose to save some person knowing that every prior event he's done is going to kill the person anyways you know it just doesn't make sense to me and the villain was so stock and yeah, it kind of bumped it down from the initial rating I was going to give it because I was going to go with a five on it. But that ending really hit me hard, and I didn't like it as much after that. So it's going to knock it down to a three rating for me. Okay. And um, as far as uh, the next movie I watched, which was I, – I looked I looked into it a little more after I got home from uh, seeing it. But it was called uh, – Tom Holland was in it. It was called Chaos Walking. And I think the girl from uh, what's her name, Daisy Ridley, I think her name is Star Wars. She, yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, that's right, Ray in Star Wars. Yeah, 
this was a weird movie. The premise is slightly interesting. Like, is this whole thing of you can hear you're on a planet where you can hear everyone's thoughts, uh, just everything they can ever, ever be thinking, whether they're nervous, excited, angry, whatever, even if they're not speaking, you can hear everything. And she lands on this. Daisy really lands on this planet and it freaks all of the guys out because apparently the women of this race got wiped out years ago. And for some reason, she's trying to find it back to a ship. And then from there, the story gets heavily convoluted and it's pretty much all over the place. And I didn't really enjoy it that much. But then I found out later that this movie was actually shot in 2017. And then it, it got rewrites like two or three times and only recently got finished. So four years later. And you can tell. Because, like I said, there's so many inconsistencies with this plot. It doesn't know what kind of movie it wants to be. Because one minute it wants to be a rescue mission. The next minute it wants to be a sci-fi movie. The next minute it wants to be a drama, a comedy, something. It just doesn't know. There's, there's this huge inconsistent tone that just goes throughout the entire film. And by the end of it, I gave so little of a shit of what was going on that I pretty much checked out. So uh, this is going to get pretty low for me on the rating scale. I think I'm going to stick with, I want to say, I want to give it a two for premise alone. But since the premise got annoying to me over time, I'm going to stick with a one, actually. This just did not do it for me. Yeah, that was my experience at the uh, movies this week. You still there? I think I don't. I can't hear you. Sorry, muted myself. So that'll take us to our next topic: the uh, issue of Walmart wanting you to not steal their shit. So, Walmart and Target have suspended selling trading cards: baseball, football, hockey, Pokemon, whatever, whatever they sold. Mm-hmm. You can buy them online still, but they said that for health and safety reasons, they will no longer be selling them in the store. Pox. I call pox. I don't know what pox means in this regard, but I call it. I'm calling pox. Pox on you, pox on your house. Dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow, all that jazz. Is that just another way of calling bullshit on what they're saying? Maybe. I'm going to Google it. I don't want to accidentally drive into a ethnic slur by any chance. Okay. Uh, I just Googled, I call pox and I see nothing, so it's now my thing. Uh, There you go. Uh, I think the original term is I call hacks. When a person thinks you are hacking due to killing the person. So, yeah, I'm just making up I call pox. Pox, poxy, poxy, poxy. There you go. So, regardless, um, a memo came out from from Walmart. It's, it's, we're pulling the cards, but health and safety reasons? Yes, you sure about that? No. Turns out that customers are stealing our shit. <laughs> and that's why they're not selling them anymore. Matt, do you feel like the company should be honest about why they're no longer selling trading cards? I believe it's a fair point to do that because this just sounds it sounds weird that you would just remove trading cards for safety reasons. The story didn't make any sense to me. Uh, the thing says, the trading card categories have been removed from the sales floor and sales of these items have been suspended due to inappropriate customer behavior and increased demand. Please do not stock these items until further direction from management has been given. Questions and comments can be directed to the management team. I mean, why Like, why you gotta lie? Like, why not just put them in, in fucking uh, uh, locked doors with, next to the video games? Like, come on. Like, this shit's not make- hard. <laughs> That would, that would make a lot. That would make a lot of sense because that's, I believe, the lock things with video games was only done in the past few years, to my knowledge. Because before they just, just used to sit on shelves, I believe. No, it's been longer than a few years. Really? Mm-hmm. Because hmm. Toys R Us started doing that in like the early two thousands, maybe even the late. That's 2000s. true. That's true. Because it, it used to be you would just pick up the ticket from Toys R Us and be like, "I want this game," and then they're like, "No, we're gonna put them in containers." Now you gotta ask the dude in the game lab or whatever the fuck it's called to go get it. Fucking bullshit. Yeah, lots of that. Lots of these places do it now. So why would you not? You have so many other like sporting goods and games and other and was it? I think even razors and stuff are behind like you know glass cases and stuff. You have to get a lock or a key for. Why yep. wouldn't you do it here? Good point. So 
I've been watching Dexter. I'm down to the final More two Dexter, episodes. Huh? Yes, I'm down to the final two episodes of the series. And I'm going to tell you something. The second half of the series is better than the first half. Fuck, fuck, fucking fight mm-hmm. me. Fucking fight me. Really? Fight me. Really? I'm I'm in I'm in I'm I'm not actually I'm not really angry about that. I'm just kind of intrigued as to why you feel that way. So I'll go through real quickly kind of like a uh, general s- s- synopsis of, of the first, you know, what have you seasons. Um, mm-hmm. Season one was basically based off the book almost verbatim. Uh, it followed the book as close as, as, as one could, but the rest of the series, to my understanding, has completely diverged from the books, so that's fine. Um, the first one introduced the brother, which ended up being the only time he was seen in the series alive. They kill him at the end of the series, and I was like, oh, so they kill off Dexter's crazy brother. That wouldn't have been a cool character to revisit down the line. Thanks for that one, guys. <laughs> the mm. second season was this crazy pyro chick who ends up like, yes, Dexter, I'm British, and I want to love you and fuck you and love you and then burn you to death. And it's like, oh, okay, that's, that's, that's fine. I guess that's a thing. And then she gets stabbed in France, and I was like, ha fuck you. <laughs> The third season <laughs> had the best guest, guest star. And, and you said last week um, that the show, what it never lacked was good talent. And you're right. The, the talent for the show has always been good. Um, fucking Jimmy mm-hmm. Smith in season three was great. But his character kind of felt all over the place. And I wasn't too, mm-hmm. like, I liked what they were going for. Like this, this, you know, he looks good on the outside, but he's evil on the inside. idea. like, that was cool. They didn't execute it well. The Trinity Killer was the dumbest fucking thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> like, like, like we said before, that was everybody's favorite thing, but yeah, it didn't make sense either. Yeah, I, I didn't like it. Now, if it was like one of those situations where the Trinity Killer was like a surprise, like, oh my God, I can't believe it's fucking John Lithgow. Like, oh, that, that would have been cool. But no, like, mm-hmm. fucking opening scene, John Lithgow's the bad guy. Oh no. And then there's like five episodes where Morgan's like, I, or Dexter's like, I'm, I should kill him. No, you shouldn't. Learn from him. Learn to be normal, Dexter. It was like dumb, and then his wife dies because the Trinity Killer is like, I found out who you are. I cut her leg. La 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 da 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 da. So like, that was dumb. It was all like happenstance. Like I think she forgot like her keys or some bullshit or her passport or some dumb shit like that. Like how do you leave the house and forget that? And then she comes back and dies. Like whatever, fuck off. Such a lack of logic, right? It's so dumb. It's so fucking dumb. Anyway, so then things get really good in season five. Season five was the one with um, uh, what's her name? She was uh, she played Loman Pierce. I love that name because it constantly like, made fun of her. Like, what, what the hell's Loman? Who, who's, who's named Loman? Can't remember her name in real life. She was in Save the Last Dance and Ten Things I Hate About Are You. Are you talking about Julia? Talking about Julia yes. Stiles? Yes, that's who it is. Julia Stiles. Julia Stiles is great in this. Like, this is my might be my favorite season. Like, you had fucking Astral. Like, you know, you're you're glad Mom's dead. You're fucking this new chick and. And then they had that great scene near the end of the season where she's like, you know, if you are dating a woman, that's okay. And I was like, Astrid, yeah, you finally don't suck for, for, for the first time in like five fucking episodes. Good job. Maybe that was season six. I don't remember. I think it was season five. Um, so like that was cool. I, and I really like the idea of like these five friends from, from band camp turning into like homicidal rapists. Like that was cool. I dug that because like it gave them like a, a bigger challenge, like almost like a cabal or like a league to fight against. And, like, I loved all the way they set it up and, and like, the, all the little plans. And, like, you had their little devotee. I was like, she's all obsessed with the main villain of the season. I'm like, this is, this is really fucking well done. Like, this is, like, the perfect season. Flat out. Perfect fucking mm-hmm. season. The only hang-up is Loman is, like, I have to go back to Minnesota. And she and texts is like, bitch, I've been telling you that for five fucking episodes. Then we finally fucked. Now you want to leave? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you cunt. Must have been pretty bad bed that I guess. I don't know. Apparently Julia Siles like, I didn't want that ending. I wanted to stick around. <laughs> so like it's cool. Whatever. Um season six. What was six? I'm trying to do this without looking at the wiki. I know seven was no, six was the Armageddon killer. That's right. That's right. He was okay. I liked where they were going with it, but I don't think they executed it well. Um, Colin Hanks plays this kind of split personality character who um, is talking to Edward James almost another great gift for the series but they didn't really give 
uh, uh, almost uh, any real great depth for his character. And I was really disappointed with that because, like, that's like a tier talent. And and they, hey, they when they, hey, when they do that, they buffed it with Jimmy Smiths. They buffed it with Edward Edward James almost, and like you could have done so much with that character. You could have given him such great lines because if you ever watch him in like Battlestar Galactica or uh, what was that movie? Uh, uh, do the right thing. No, stand and stand and deliver. That's what it was called. Like mm. he's fucking great. He's a fucking I've seen great. Him in something else before too. I just don't remember. Well, he's what been it a, is. he's been in a bunch of shit. Mm-hmm. But like he's really great at giving speeches. Doing monologues, and they didn't really utilize that. And I thought that was a dis- like real lot. Like, mm, yeah. mm. wasn't happy with that. That is a shame. That right? is a shame. It, it really fucking is. Um, I think they would. They should have done a better idea of like explaining why. Because he plays like the professor, if you remember. Because you've seen the seasons. Mm-hmm. He plays yeah, the professor to Colin Hanks, but like they're always out and about together. And like in like the first fucking episode, like Colin Hanks or is like ordering food, and like the waitress is like, "So Colin Hanks character, do you want anything else?" And he's like, "No," and she just ignores Edward James almost. I'm like, <sighs> "So he's dead or a figment of his imagination, right?" And then he's, yeah, he's he's actually both. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Damn like, like, it! What they should have done is like you know had him like always stay at like the monetary or monastery or whatever the fuck they were at, and be like. Me, you know I can't leave here. I'm a wanted man. It's like, all right, that explains enough. And, like, the only times you see him is, like, when he sneaks around and, like, you know, you hear people going, hey, who are you talking to? Like, that That would have been a great setup. And then, like, oh, he's actually dead all along. Da, da, da. And I think the other big issue that they had was they made, I, I, forget, I forget his actual name, so we're just going to call him Colin. They made Colin too fucking likable. Because there's that little bit in, like, the middle, like, near the end of the middle, start of the end kind of the, of the season where, He's like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to help you take down the professor. And then it turns out the professor's dead. I would have gone more into that split personality, bipolar kind of angle and have him constantly going back and forth, leading into Dexter basically doing a mercy kill. Like, like the Colin Hanks like, I killed my sister. Just fucking kill me. I can't do this anymore, Dexter. I, I don't know when the other side of me is going to emerge, and I, I can't be responsible. I'm like, <laughs> And that would have been hearing perfect. that. That's exactly that's exactly kind of what I wanted out of it. Right. So I wanted him to have like a reason for like being crazy. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he would do something completely out of bounds or something, not just like, oh, we like you, and now it's a shame. You know, it's. Eh. I'm not like a big yeah. gore guy either. Like Saw, Spiral, Hostel, those aren't my flicks. Like I like the first Saw only because that fucking ending, man. I literally went, oh shit, in the middle of the theater the first time I saw that fucking movie. I didn't see like my jaw was on the ground. Like I didn't see it coming. I don't like the editing in those movies. Well, I think like, that's my, my biggest. My issue. point, my point isn't about critiquing the movie. It's like I don't like the gore. I don't like the traps. I don't like the death, and that's not my thing. Yeah. Lead yeah, into yeah, yeah. To, to lead into this statement. I, that's kind of what the doomsday guy was. He was like a saw dude, like not necessarily with with traps, but like with his over the top deaths. And the one that I thought was most ingenious that I actually was like, oh, my God, was the uh, the fallen angel, the, the the diner chick or whatever she was. No, mm. it wasn't the diner chick. He, he did he, No, he did kill the diner chick. It was the other chick he let go. He uh, strapped the diner chick up as, as that angel, and then um, the police end up you know, exposing the tripwire, and her jugular gets pierced because of the tripwire. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> Damn, yeah, brutal shit. Man. Yeah, I, was like, I didn't see that one coming. And, like, the tableaus were all really fucked up. I also like the new detective they brought in. Um, God, I can't, I can't remember where I've seen... He was in something else. Oh, he was in Sons of Anarchy. That's where, that's right. He was in Sons of Anarchy. Mm-hmm. So he was, like, a great little addition. Uh, they kill him immediately in Season 7. Like, just... Uh, uh, but at the end of Season 6, we find out two real big revelations. One of which I loved. The other one was... All right. The one that was all right was that... Deb finds out that Dex is a serial killer when she watches him stab uh, t- uh, Colin Hanks. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that, yep. Like, that was fine, but then, like, all of season seven with her, like, you're a serial killer, Dexter, and he's like, yeah, like, we've gone through this several times now. <laughs> yeah, but we're, in, we're in season seven. I don't think this is, like, new news to you. <laughs> the thing that I really liked, though... And apparently they dropped the angle because they didn't like uh, the, the, the the some fans were very vocal about it, where Deborah like realizes that she's in love with Dexter. I was like, yes, this show's so fucked up. Let's go crazier with it. Let's go down this rabbit hole. Yeah, please ride that train, man. That's gonna that'd be really interesting. I I, I really wanted to see that uh, play out, 
More so, though, what I really liked is, and I forget her name, but uh, Jennifer Carpenter, I think, uh, her reactions during all of it. Like when she's like, in season seven, I think is what it was, because that's when they introduced uh, Yvonne Strafsky. <laughs> Uh, she, he, Dexter's like, yeah, like, I'm in love with her, or like I, I have feelings for her, and something like that. And Jennifer Carpenter's character, she's she just fucking loses it. She's like snotting, and eyes are popping. And she's like, you're in lo- Dexter. I just told you I'm in love with you. And like the way, like she was like viscerally, like like coughing out the words, and like you can feel the aches in her body. And I'm like, God, this woman is a great actress. Holy shit. She. she- She's fantastic, man. She she is she was my reason I stuck it out with this entire series for the most part. I'm not surprised. She's fantastic. Like she's really fucking mm-hmm. like likable. Um, so uh, the season six ends like that, and season seven is, introduces uh, a combo platter of villains. You from the first front you have uh, the second Punisher or the third Pun- Punisher technically. Uh, I forget his name. He was in Punisher Warzone. He plays a. Um, Yugoslavian, Ukrainian, Ukrainian, Ukrainian drug lord or kingpin or what have you, who's secretly gay and in love with a guy that Dexter kills, and now this guy wants to get revenge, but then there's other guys trying to kill him, and he's like, Dexter, I need your help. And Dexter's like, why should I trust you? And he's like, oh. Dexter's like, fair point, let's kill these bitches. (laughs) (laughs) And, like, you really end up liking the guy. Like, he's a very charming dude, and he keeps his word, and he's like, Dexter, I told you I'd keep my word. But then he gets shot anyway, and I'm like, but I liked him so much. He's such a good guy. Sure, he sells drugs and murders people, but he's a decent chap. Good bloke. (laughs) (laughs) The ads justify the means, I guess? No, they don't, but he's a charming guy. And, like, Dexter ends up, like, giving him, like, one last request of of taking him to where he buried his, his lover, and he's like, uh, the dude dies like on the boat right o- uh, over the spot, and Dexter buries them together. Like that's some messed up fucking Romeo and Juliet shit there, but I loved it. I thought that was great. Um, the other part aspect was they introduced uh, Yvonne Shrovsky's character, who is a poisoner, but she only ever poisons people who who have wronged her apparently. Um, so like that's cool, with the exception of the woman she gets the uh, the flower hut from. Apparently, that was a mercy kill, allegedly. Everyone else, though, they they try to ruin her. So she's like, I gotta protect myself. And she's a cool character. I don't think she's better than Loman, but she makes more sense for Dexter to be with because even though she's not a psychopath like Dexter is, she is more in the uh, realm of understanding the urges. Like she gets him. So, like, she's fine. While Jennifer Carpenter spent the last two seasons going, Dexter, you kill people. I can't be with you or be around you or you make me sick or I hate myself. Yvonne Strauss, she's like, oh, you want to kill that dude? Cool. You want a blowjob before you go? <laughs> <laughs> like, she's chill. See, like, she's she's the one who's like the balance he needs. You know what I mean? Right. She, she's chill. She's chill. Gotta love it. Uh, and then in season eight, we have the psycho professor lady and then her son the, uh, what, what, the brain surgeon and like this season I, I understand why people don't like it but I, I feel like they don't like it not because it's not good but because it, it it's disappointing in a vastly different way than what people are used to hearing that word Game of Thrones' last season is disappointing Dexter's last season is purposely disappointing hey, here's a young psychopath that you're going to like, and he's cool, and Dexter can train him, and he wants to make Dexter proud, and he's a good guy, but he has urges, and, and he's only killing people because his mother's upset, but he does have an urge, but his mother is dying, and or emotionally dying, and he wants to protect her, so he's, he's, he's got a good heart. He's just kind of going in the wrong direction. Oh, he's dead? That's fine. <laughs> just... Jamie, one of the reasons why I actually ended up watching the show is to see her because I love her. She's gorgeous. I love her. Oh my god, marry me. She's all like, I'm I'm in love with this detective dude. And the detective dude is still in love with his ex, and I, 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 why can't I be loved? And I'm like, I love you. I love you to the moon and back. <laughs> but no, she gets dumped, and her poor little heart gets broken. And I'm sitting here going, No, I can fix you. <laughs> Please let me help you. <laughs> I can love you. I, I will love you for, for eternity. Or for at least the next six weeks. Find out which one's which. <laughs> so I, I can see why people like, didn't like that. And then, of course, we had uh, 
Uh, what else happened this season? Obviously, Jennifer Carpenter dies in the, in, in, the, in the series. I haven't actually gotten to that scene, but I, I, I'm well aware of it by now. <laughs> like, I know what happens. Um, mm-hmm. LaGuardia died. I felt nothing for that. Like, she spent like mm-hmm. six years, seven years ruining people's lives, except for that weird break in four and five when she was married to uh, Angel. Angel Hernandez, Angel. So, like, that was fine, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Big who cares even about LaGuardia. Uh, let's see what else happened in season eight. Um, Dexter's surrogate mother, the psychopath whisperer, dies. Like, who cares about that? I don't know. Uh, I, 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 eight kind of set up like a lot of ideas and then didn't deliver on any of them purposely because, like, how can you be a serial killer and have the life you wanted? And that's kind of the whole point of the ending. But also, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. Don't try to piss off your fans. <laughs> I mean, you are you you're aware of the ending, yes, right? Yes, yes, you know I, how. It, okay. Yes, I, I I I'm aware of the ending. Uh, he kills the, the the psychopath with the brain guy. Then Yvonne Stravsky takes Dexter's son to Argentina, which seems like an unnecessary rodeo. But hey, here we, here we are. Could have just gone to Canada, Australia, New Zealand. She is Australian. Stravsky's from from Australia, so like obviously there's some. Some intimate knowledge on the land. And then Dexter goes to Oregon, which actually was a great callback because, what was it, season six? He kills the old man who's the uh, the tooth fairy. I think it was season six, maybe it was season seven. And uh, <laughs> he, in his little monologue, he's like, you know, uh, he, he's from Oregon, and, hey, maybe I should go to Oregon one day. And he's like, oh, <laughs> no, what was, what was the line? That would be, um, oh, fuck, what was it? Uh, that'd be so cliche. A serial killer in Oregon. <laughs> and then he ends they up in Oregon. Anyway. <laughs> I thought that was great. Like, I, I get it. It's a bit, it's a little bit, to, like, a, a bit's a comedic kind of instance for anyone who doesn't know what a bit is. And it, so it's like a little bit callback for the entire ending of the series. But still a better ending than How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, the the very end of it to me, I felt like, it was another one of those kind of like what kind of endings, but then again, what would you expect? How would you else would you expect it to end though? Like, do you really want him to get away with it? Like, honestly, because I I don't feel like he really did. I feel like he just had to. He like basically is pretending he's dead. If I remember that right. Well, he gets away with it um, from everything that I read, mm-hmm. but he's not happy, and that was kind of the point. You can't be happy and be a serial killer. So mm-hmm. we'll see what season nine brings because, you know, they're, they're, season nine's coming out sometime this year. Uh, I don't know how many people are coming back from the, from the original show. Obviously, Jennifer Carpenter can't. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I so wish they didn't kill her off, though, man. Well, to be fair, I don't think they ever intended on doing a season nine. So, But then again, they shouldn't have killed her off anyway because even if she wasn't with Dexter, which would have been just the grossest, perfect way to end the series, like the two of them, like... F- like ushering in a new generation of Morgans, <laughs> like like the perfect way to end a serial killer show with incest, right? <laughs> like it's just, it's not it's not technically incest. It's non biological incest. So it's that's not even right because te- he's adopted. Yep. That's right. So so it's, it completely plays in Poughkeepsie. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So it's not, as long as it's not by blood directly. Yes. Okay. Yes. If, okay. If, if if this was some flowers in the attic bullshit, we'd have a different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else read that book? <laughs> oh God! Oh man! Oh, I'm going to double check. Thing. I'm going to double check that that's the proper name of the book. Yeah, flowers in the attic. There it is. Boom. Yeah, it's basically a story about like an aunt or like a grandmother locks up uh, three kids in the attic, and like the two oldest end up having an incestuous uh, relationship. It's fucking weird. <laughs> this was the '50s, though. 70s, 70s, where they were doing, a, like, a lot of really perverted shit, so. So you always thought it was better that Dexter was more of, like, a protector for Deb instead of, like, them wanting to actually be, like, a couple type of thing? No, I don't, because they literally, I think it was, like, the first fucking book, they literally set up the, the whole idea of them being romantically involved, because he says, you know, I don't think, I, cause I think it was when he meets Rita, or not meets Rita, but when we, the audience, meets Rita. He says something like, you know, um... I, you know, I've never had feelings for Rita the way normal people would, and I think if I was ever going to have those feelings, it would be for Deb. So, like, they fucking set it up. 
And then in season mm. six, like, they had this big fucking traumatic reveal, like, oh, my God, I'm in love with my own brother. And I'm sitting here going, hmm. Hmm. Let's see how this plays out. <laughs> and then by the end of season seven, I'm like, hmm. Well, that was a waste of a weird angle. <laughs> like, if you're going to start something weird, follow it through. Let's find out just how weird it can get. <laughs> yeah, I felt like they were just afraid to commit to it, you know? They were. They were. I think it was the mm-hmm. fan backlash. And it wasn't even that much of a backlash because, like, usually when you hear about, like, some big fandom backlash, it crosses over to the mainstream. I never fucking heard of it. Not until I fucking watched it and did my uh, due diligence and reading up on the series. Because I, I don't ever just, like, watch a series. Like, I, I'm always on the Wikipedia page or, like, uh, I'm, I'm reading articles. Because, like, I want to I wanna live vicariously through, the, through the, the viewers who come before me, you know? Yeah, I'm, yeah, like, so, I'm like that, too, man. I got to do as much research as possible on a show. I try not to do research on it. I try to engage with that stuff as it's happening. Because I don't ever want to, like, spoil it for myself. Mm-hmm. So, like, I try to always okay. keep pace with it. But, like, you know, in season one, I was reading stuff on season one, looking up the actors, seeing what else they've done and all that good stuff. And so, like, yeah. So far, you know, I think the reason why I liked six, seven, uh, and five a lot better than I did the first four is it established the characters pretty well. Um, it set Dexter in a very, and I don't want to say realistic, but you felt like, yeah. If a serial killer was trying to raise kids, he would have a hard time raising them. <laughs> like, I think it was in season eight, yeah. he snaps at his son because his son was doing twirlies on the little little thing in the office, and he knocks over the vase that Angel gave him that LaGuardia used to own. And he's like, Harrison, I told you to stop. And Harrison's like, oh, fuck. But the thing, <laughs> the thing that I think they missed out on is, like, either that episode or the, or the very next episode, Jamie, who's the babysitter, goes, hey... Harrison lost the remote, but he won't tell me where it is. And then you find out that the remote's broken. And they could have done, like, a great little moment where Harrison broke the remote by accident and then hit it because his dad got mad at him for breaking the vase, and he was scared. But they don't even touch on that. And they just go with the, well, you lie sometimes. I don't even remember what it was about. Oh, yeah, it was about his little fucking doggy getting blood on it, and he threw it out. And we didn't even fucking hear about that. Like, we saw him throw it out. But he didn't say anything to his son. So I think there's, like, a lot missing in the season that could have been in there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they cut some of it out if they ever filmed it. And I think that's part of the reason why some people, like, didn't like Eight as much because there was, like, some gaps that were missing. But I wouldn't say there's a lot of loose-hanging plot lines. A lot of conveniently, like, wrapped-up plot lines. But it's a television show. (laughs) Convenience is the trend. What do you want, dude? Right? But Especially if it's your final season, you're going to have to wrap things up. Well, know? I don't think they've left anything like uh, uh, kind of dangling. Like Even in season eight, they mentioned Cody and Aster, and, and even though we haven't seen Cody in three seasons, I think, or two seasons. No, he was in season seven. That's right. He had that one episode. Like Even though we haven't seen them that much, they're still being like included in the universe. So, like You feel like they're still around. But, like yeah, it, it's, a, it's a fine series. I, I wouldn't say it's a good series for me, personally. Like I'm not going to sit here and ever really watch it, I think. Because, like, every time I watch them, like, there's, like, so much missed opportunity. But I think, like, I, I, I get the praise. Because, like, uh, the dude who plays Dexter, I forget his name, really fucking good. Oh, it, he's, he's amazing. But, but I remember watching him in Six Feet Under, so, like, this wasn't surprising. It was surprising to see him go from a kind of eh, effeminate gay dude, I, I guess is the proper way of, of going with, with the terminology. <laughs> To a more butch psychopath that likes, you know, chopping up baby killers and rapists and 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 the likes. Like that was that was a that was a juxtaposition. It's kind of like, uh, hey, Michael Keaton's gonna be Batman. You're like, wait, Mr. Mom's gonna be Batman? How, how the fuck is that gonna play out? Turns out quite pulls well. Pulls off beautifully. <laughs> turns out quite well. <laughs> pulls out great. Right. So like, you know, sometimes you just gotta uh, gotta wait and see how it turns out. So. All right, well, what else? Uh, I watched, uh, I guess we'll, we'll talk about Zombies at My Neighbors next. <laughs> okay. then, then, then we'll talk about other stuff. <laughs> like I said, I didn't, I didn't arrange the show's order in a cohesive manner. This is chaos. <laughs> yes, it is. So LucasArts Games, Zombies at My Neighbors, and Ghoul Patrol, the unofficial sequel to Zombies at My Neighbors, are coming to Nintendo Switch next month. That'd be great. I'm not reading this whole fucking article. Oh, wait, no. never mind. It says right there, <laughs> the biggest issue is revolved, is revolved. The ports are reportedly developed by Dotamu and include new features such as the ability to save anywhere. 
I appreciate that. <laughs> that was a big issue. Because <laughs> like the one thing you don't want to do is uh, fucking play that game and, and try to use the uh, the safe states. That, 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 or not the safe states, the, um, the save codes, because you'll end up starting someplace and not have any fucking weapons. Does right. it have like 50 stages or something like that, right? It has 50 stages, and you can jump to like every fifth stage, I think, if you get the code. So, like, it's it's not. And, great. and this is where your power ups wouldn't retain, though, then, right? Not just power up. You wouldn't have any of the weapons. You wouldn't have anything. Oh, okay. So, so, hence the issue. <laughs> Un problemo, mm-hmm. por favor. So, uh, uh, that's cool. Are you going to buy it? Oh yeah, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be fifteen bucks. So yeah, it's coming with two games coming with it. There's gonna be a whole like, I think there's an actual there's like a interview with the developer and stuff like that about the game. There's gonna be some unreleased concept art and stuff like that. Some uh, the soundtrack's gonna be on it too. Um, some actual local co-op. There's a lot going on with this, and supposedly there's supposed to be a physical version getting made from um, from Limited Run. But every time they get a game made, it takes like four months for it to even. Sh- Ghoul Patrol, but oh, I, I, from what I've seen of it, it looks like, like exactly the same, just with a l- slightly different art style. But for fifteen bucks, and this is um, so I know Disney Disney has the rights to this, right? I don't know. You know. Disney doesn't have a video game division anymore, so I don't know. The it's the Lucas Film thing. Disney has that, and that this is from Lucas uh, uh, Lucas Arts I or thought, something like I that. I thought Lucas Arts and Lucas Films. Because uh, uh, Lucas Arts and Lucas Films aren't the same thing. Um, Lucas Arts, I think, has is defunct. They, they're they're no, whatever. I they're think no longer a holding. Something related to that is, yeah, something something related to that is the um, original creators of this, or at least the publisher or something. And I think Disney owns the rights to that uh, because this the, they've done this before with their own properties. With um, what was it? The Lion King and Aladdin kind of had the same idea. With the, with their approach to this, and I hope this I hope the physical release is kind of similar in like a Super Nintendo looking box, but for Switch that would be kind of cool. Hmm. Um, but, but yeah, I'll definitely I will for sure play this because Zombies Ate My Neighbors from at least from what I remember it was the first game of the uh, retro game of the year I picked for our one of our award shows. Mm-hmm. So just without this without question is one of probably one of my favorite games on the system. So yeah, no question. If you um you get a, if you get a switch, will you pick it up too? Uh, yeah, eventually if I ever get a switch, <laughs> I gotta get around to it. <laughs> so yeah, the only thing you'll find out is lights. So good luck with that. So the one thing that I didn't uh, yeah, I didn't add to 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 the the YouTube, not the YouTube, the uh, the, the slideshow. I watched season four of Castlevania. I thought I had a, a slide sh- sh- set up for that, so I'll just keep it on what it what it, what it's on. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna admit that uh, I don't think the series is gonna hold up well overall. They were telling a four season narrative, and I feel like they peaked in two. When did that? When did that? Did that just come out like just just recently, like this past week or a couple of days ago? A couple of days. Okay, yeah, I have to, I'll have to watch it then. I, w- I won't spoil anything, so you can watch it. Um, some of my theories did come true. Like, do you do you want to know who the big villain is? That's fine. Go, it's, go for it's, it. It's death. I won't tell you how they introduce him, but I liked it, and and, and they kind of did what I thought they would. They they went away from just him being the Grim Reaper to being like the ultra vampire. <laughs> okay. Basically, he's like Sounds a com- weird. he's a combination of the idea of of the Grim Reaper slash the original vampire. So basically, uh, he he the the creature says that he's been around since God created man, and death feeds on the souls of the dead. So he's not a vampire, but he has vampiristic uh, uh, tendencies. Now, in the games, Death resurrected uh, Dracula or helped resurrect Dracula and uh, protected him. In the show, he uses Dracula not so much as, as a pawn, but like they're more like a symbiotic relationship. Dracula wants to kill the entire human population, and Death is kosher with that because that means he gets to eat. And, and he has a great line. He's like, you know, I, I want Dracula... Because I want to not be hungry anymore. And I think, oh, that's a pretty good line. Like, ooh, kill the world, stuff your body. 
Mm. But like, I won't go into any specifics or details or anything like that. I will say that some of the storylines kind of just end, not like abruptly, mm. but like, all right, hey, what's going on over here with these two? Oh, they're just gonna go away. Okay, what about these two? They have a combative relationship. Are they gonna? Oh, they're just they're cool now. Randomly, okay. So just no satisfying conclusions then. Yeah, and then like like the ending is like this. Oh look look who's back! Oh my god! And I'm like I don't care. <laughs> mm, I thought man, this was following. Disappointing, man. But but it's, it's it's not just disappointing. It's retroactively disappointing because it, it ruins season three for <sighs> me. Because like season three was okay, but like mm. everything they built up in season three was kind of like ah. The only thing I would say really paid off was was the Carmella of it all. But even like. Mm. The whole Carmel of it all it ended up involving the wrong person, in my opinion. So, like, it, mm. it, it's it's kind of like uh, here's a historical context. You remember the Rock and Austin feud from the old WWF, yes? Yes, I do. Imagine you're building up to WrestleMania 17. It's Rock. It's Austin. It's Rock. It's Austin. It's Rock. It's Austin. It's Austin. It's Triple H. Huh? What? Yeah, exactly. That's kind of how how the whole Carmella of it all went. Now I have to go back and rewatch seasons one and two. Maybe, maybe they have a lot more going on than I remember, but <clears throat> not likely. Um, there's just some stuff in season four that I was like, "Wait, wh- how do you know that?" Like at the end of the season, Saifa reveals something huge, and I'm like, "Wait, when was the? How did everyone know about this?" And then she randomly say it like. Fucking hell. <laughs> and the problem Damn is it. there's a lot of repeating dialogue, and I don't understand why. Mm-hmm. Like, it, I, it, w- 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 I think it was St. Germain did that a lot. Um, Alucard did that a lot. And the other thing that really kind of irked me, because it was only ever done towards men, all of the women are like, men are stupid, or hey, you would be dead if it wasn't for me because you're a man, or... I came up with all your ideas. And oh, I'm like, what, what the fuck is up with this? Like, who wrote this goddamn season? Like, this was not a good season. Uh, oh, God. that I don't even want to watch it. It's more and more I hear about it, man, the less I want to watch it, honestly. The saving grace is the battles are fucking incredible. But they don't always make Like, there's a scene where they're fighting two rock monsters, and then I think it was uh, um, uh, um, Belmont hits him with his whip, and they start bleeding. I'm like, What? How do rock monsters bleed? That is weird. I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's going to disappoint I, I, you. That's on the t- fucking hey, dude. Like, everything you're saying, I'm like, really? Really? No? What the fuck? And why am I even going to bother? Yep. It's not great. It's not great. Damn. Damn. They, they introduce side characters that they never revisit to, and it's just fucking dumb. It's so fucking dumb. Anyway, so some good stuff. Uh, I've been working a lot, so I, I decided I wanted some new music. So I hopped from okay. Spotify to Pandora, and I just hit you know hit one of my stations. And I'm like, all right, let's get me some music. Uh, two of the songs that I, I've just been recycling in my head, granted they're not new, new, but I've not listened to them in quite some time, are Chuck Reagan's Wish on the Moon and Frank Turner's Plain Sailing Weather. They are fan-fucking-tastic songs. And like I have a bunch more to you know in my fucking catalog to go through, but like if you listen, if you like uh, a little bit more up tempo Bruce Springsteen style music, these two dudes definitely have it. Chuck Reagan has more of a smoky Southern voice, while Frank Turner I think is British, so like they have their own stylings when they sing, and both of these songs are top notch. Just wow, just just fan fucking tastic. <laughs> but with that said, let's talk about the UB tubes. I've actually seen some stuff for this week, but I'll throw it to you for now. What have you been watching on YouTube? Um, I would say probably the there's a couple there's a couple of things. Um, one I found kind of interesting, and it kind of goes back to the the GameCube and the Game Boy player type deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned I, I learned I learned a few things about it this week from uh, Spawn Wave. He usually doesn't always do like. He does do some teardowns of systems and stuff like that, but mostly I stick to him for news content. But I found this one particularly interesting is that they actually, this isn't some special edition or anything, that they just literally took a Game Boy Advance and just shoved it into a peripheral. That's all it is. Hmm. And um, like you, if, you, if you took the components apart and you like reworked a few things, you could essentially make your own 
con like home console for it, just with a few extra parts that wouldn't cost you much. Um, and the other thing, I, ne I never knew it. It's so simple and stupid, but I, I never realized you could do it. Is when you're, you put in the cart, you put in the cartridge. I never realized there was an actual eject button for the, for the cartridge. Hmm. I always thought you had to like just pull it out, right? But on the right hand side, there's a little lever. If you press it, the cartridge just pops right out. I'm like, oh shit, that saves me a lot of time when I'm playing this now. <laughs> And there's also, I heard there's also, like, workarounds and stuff to get past not having the, the actual, like, disc. But you have to kind of rework the whole system, and I'm just not that tech-savvy to want to, like, turn it into a straight-up emulation machine. I prefer to have the physical discs, even though I know over time they will eventually not work anymore. Um, I don't know. The, the idea of emulating a, a system in there, it's just, it's weird to me. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not a fan of it, honestly. Um, let's see. Uh, otherwise, um, SNES Drunk did a pretty f uh, cool video of uh, games you knew by the, by their cover, and the one the one I n I never really knew what it was is one he highlighted was called Zoop, uh, Zoop I think it was called. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what this fucking game ever was, and it was some kind of weird puzzle game. And I'm going. I don't know, still doesn't look like something I would play, but I definitely get where he's coming from because I've seen a lot of those games when I was growing up. Um, and the the other big one was that it was that shooter game Phalanx or something. Mm -hmm. How it has that like dude on dude on the banjo or something. And he went into the history of that and he basically said that the company who released that really just wanted to do something off the wall and off putting to throw people up, throw people completely through a loop. Cause they didn't know how else to sell it. Because other than just looking at another generic space shooter, they're like, just do put some do with a banjo on it. Then nobody will know what the fuck the game is. Okay. And that's why I kind of never played it. Um, let's see. Slopes Game Room did a pretty good video on the... On, actually, uh, one of the games we, re we reviewed in a series, uh, the, the Strike series, like Desert, Jungle, all of those different mm -hmm. type of games. <clears throat> Um, there's actually quite a few more planned in that series. I didn't realize how elaborate it actually went. It went all the way to place to PlayStation, the PlayStation era. There was like there was Urban, there was like Jungle Strike, and a few more. There was Desert um, Jungle, was a, Soviet Nuclear. Yeah, there was also a future one planned actually, and it it got reworked into something called Future Cop LAPD or something, hmm. but it has a lot of the similar like gameplay elements on PlayStation. And I've heard that's actually a fun game. So if I ever hunt, if I ever hunt down a copy, I might try that. Um, but I would have to say the most interesting video, the most entertaining video for me this week was Amanda, the Jedi's look at the, I want to, I hope I got the name right. It's called what lies below the Netflix movie. Mm -hmm. What, <clears throat> way she was describing I'm like dude what what the fuck is this with like an alien an alien coming down and harvesting harvesting women for some reason and they're all in tanks I'm like what the fuck is going on here cuz I have no idea what's happening and and she her her favorite my favorite uh, aspect of this whole thing is how she she really hates the fact of what the roles of Mina, Mina Suvari from like American Pie has been choosing since she left, since she stopped doing American Pie movies, you know. And it, she did just did the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson or something. She's like, you keep picking bad roles, man, and I really hope you pick your career back up because this is just shit. Um, but yeah, very very entertaining, very good video. I, I, I kind of I kind of like the fact that you got me into this into her kind of stuff because I can actually watch a review of a movie and know everything about it without, you know, it's kind of like one of those relaxing watches, you know, mm -hmm. you, can, you can still be entertained. It's still fun. And you can learn about a movie and you don't always have to watch it, especially if it's shit. So it's, it's nice. Uh, but other than that, no, it's, um, it's kind of a light week on the whole, uh, YouTube side of things for me, other than those few. And I'll have more next week. I watched a bunch today, but I'll, I'll cover them in our next, uh, next show. So I watched a few things in between my binging of Dexter and Castlevania. <laughs> Technically, I don't binge, okay. but what have you. I, I focus exclusively on one thing, usually. Um, the leaderboard is back with a bunch of new videos. They did how <clears throat> uh, Resident Evil redefined the horror genre. It's a, it's a decent yeah. watch. Uh, check that out. 
Uh, then there was also a Parts Fun Known, their spinoff of... What the fuck is their channel called? God damn it. <laughs> their spinoff mm. of... Wrestle Talk. That's what it is. And they're a pro wrestling channel, but they focus more on like opinions, lists, rebookings, things like that. Uh, it, it's interesting to watch this video, Accidental Stardom, and, and see who maybe wasn't going to be in that position and how they got there. And, and it's really impressive. Uh, definitely one to check out if you're into pro wrestling. Uh, let's see what else. There was another one. Where the fuck were you? Did I miss it? No. Did I miss it? No. I think I missed it. Oh, well, there's one left that, I'm, that I do know of. And it came out yesterday, and it's haunted me ever since. So my spooky ookies have been very disappointing as of late. And um, I like feeling unsettled after watching it, because that's kind of the point. Th- <laughs> The good fellow Mr. Nightmare posted uh, six paranormal videos to keep you up at night. Well, they certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> so actually something delivered this time, Yes. Huh? The very first one is of this girl. I'm going to preface it by saying allegedly because you never know. And that's part of the thing. Like, like his vid- When he does these videos, because uh, he does mostly like real stories, allegedly, and he does like he reads them out, but like when he includes videos, like he's always implying like, hey, you know, it may be uh, uh, it may be faked, but you know, that's up to you to decide. And the the first one is this girl in an Airbnb, and she's hearing chanting in the walls. So she uncovers this air vent, which I don't know why it was covered, but whatever. And she can hear someone chanting in Latin. And I don't know like exactly like how the rest of the story goes because like he doesn't explain all of the details. I don't know if all the details exist. But it basically burns down to uh, the ending of the video is of her sitting on the floor sleeping with a note saying it's not nice to eavesdrop, implying that someone who was chanting found out who she was, took the photo while she was sleeping in her Airbnb, and left it for her to find. Now there's particulars like how did, how did she get the, the, the photo? Why didn't they do anything else? Like why was she sleeping in a way that she was? So it's like it could very well be all like just faked. But goddamn, it's unsettled me. <laughs> yeah, like it, 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 the, to a point, you think it's staged, but the fact that something like that could really happen, yeah, right, like yeah, that, that know. could completely fuck with you. There was another thing that wasn't completely um, spooky, ooky related, but it kind of was. I think it was for this video. Let me double check. I want to say it was. Let me. Let me uh, no, it's not. It's not this one. <clears throat> Maybe oh, I think it was a different video that he did. Hang on, let me let me go look for it real fast. Cause like this one kind of got me, <clears throat> like it got me fucking good. So he did another one from last week. I only watched this week. It was uh, same same channel, Mister Namer. It was uh, three disturbing true Snapchat stories, and these are really interesting to listen to. But the last one was a different. Uh, um, Creator, which isn't uncommon in the horror community, uh, the spooky story, the spooky ooky community. Sometimes you'll have collaborations. But it was a new guy by the name of Terry Carnation. Never heard of him before. And he's telling the story, telling the story, telling the story. And like right around the 15 minute, 24 second mark, it goes from telling the story to a shot of Terry Carnation, like doing the, the, the reading. It's fucking Rain Wilson. <laughs> What? What the fuck? Turns out Rain Wilson has a new audio project. It's like the something dark and spooky with Terry Carnation or something like that. And it's kind of like a it's supposed to be like an audio book, so to speak, like a like a quote unquote audio book. It's told in the story format, but it's all done audibly. Like there's no visuals, there's no motion picture, it's just it's just the sounds. And it's like a fucking stellar cast, like Sam Neill guest starred. <laughs> That was cool. Basically, he's a nice. radio host for an AM station who covers the paranormal and conspiracy theories. And his wife dies. So he kind of goes all mental. And he leaves the air for a while. But then he comes back, and, and on his first broadcast back, he, he and his uh, little cohort who's working in the, uh, the, the booth hear his wife call him, who's dead. And he's like, oh, got to figure this mystery out now. But he's also kind of like a giant schmuck. Like, I'm only two episodes in. They're like 40 minutes apiece. And he's on this real weird quest to steal someone's mini fridge. (laughs) 
Have you seen mm. Have you seen um, The Office all the way through? No, I've only caught a few of, like episodes here and there, but I know who you're talking about as far as Rain Wilson. Well, goes. yeah. Uh, well, there's a character in The Office that's kind of like Rain Wilson's uh, Dwight's little lackey dude. He guest stars. Um, there's a few Indian actors that guest star that if you saw them or heard them, you'd be like, oh, I know exactly who they are. Um, there's a few. Who else is in this? Uh, let, me, let me let me let me pull it up real fast. <clears throat> it's like you really, said, Sam Neil, dude. I'm intrigued. Yeah, he he's a uh, Australian caller, and he's like, uh, <laughs> uh, Terry, I love your show. Glad you're back. I got a thing to tell you. Uh, yeah, I used to visit the aliens out in the woods all the time, but those fucks are really pissing me off. They walk around naked all the time. They don't have jobs. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? He's that's literally ranting about, he's ranting about aliens not having clothes. <laughs> like, that's his big beef. Not, not the probing, not the anal stuff. No, no. His issue is with the, the aliens' nudity. So the show is called Dark Air with Terry Carnation. Uh, it's only on audios. Uh, it's like don't don't look, you know, don't be like I didn't I would tuned in didn't see a video. There's not going to be. It's a fucking uh, audio podcast show. There's 12 episodes, 13 episodes. Um, Al Madrigal plays Al Moreno, who I think is like the station manager or the agent. He's the station manager. He's a, he's a stand-up comic from, from what I remember. Yeah, he's a comedic actor. Car- yeah. I'm gonna I, I don't mean to mispronounce this. Karen Sony. Uh, he was in Deadpool as Dupinder. Remember him? I do, yeah. yeah he, I know he's in this. He's like a huge fan of Terry Carnation, and he's the uh, booth guy for the radio show. So, like, uh, Terry Carnation and Carrie Sony's character, Jeet Batra, are constantly doing things together. He's fantastic. Uh, there's little segments with a guy named Aaron Lee who plays Dr. Norman Kesden who's uh, Terry Carnation's um, volunteer court-ordered or court-ordered volunteer uh, uh, um, psychiatrist. <laughs> he's trying to make it seem like he's not, he, like it's court-ordered, court-suggested, I think is how he says it. It's, it's fucking fantastic. Yvette Nicole Brown from Community uh, is on this, and she was she had like a minor role on The Office playing opposite Rain Wilson, and their chemistry is fantastic. She plays Dr. Lizzie. Uh, then there's Jennifer Lee, who plays the Veronica. She's the pet psychic who's in love with Terry Carnation. She's hilarious. Oh, uh, oh my God! It, I am I am convinced by the, the show by the cast alone. Oh, it, it, it's th- those are just the main characters. Uh, Jimmy pra- Pardo plays the landlord. I don't think I've met him yet. Uh, Genuus Kavadivan plays Chris Batra. Uh, let's see what else we got. Let's see. Nathan Fillion is on two episodes as the Dark Air Caller. Nice. Uh, Sam Neill is the Australian Caller. He's in two episodes. Angela Kinsey, who played um, Dwight's girlfriend and then later wife on The Office. She plays the Pet Psychic Caller. I don't think... Oh, no, I did hear her in the first one. She was in the first one. Mindy Sterling is in it. Uh, Kate Flannery is in it. <clears throat> Janet Varney's in it. We have to go back because I'm trying to remember who the, a lot of this a lot of the the people from the office is in this, which is nice if you're an office fan. I like Janet Varney a lot. She was in uh, what the fuck was that show called? <clears throat> oh, fuck, I'm gonna look it up real fast. I've heard that I've heard that name, but I just I can't make the connection. You know, she was Lasseter's date to Sean and Gus's um, high school reunion. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I'm in. I got gotcha. Mindy K- Cowling. Bitchy, bitchiest banana. <laughs> Mindy, you have one bitchiest banana. She was in a show with John C. McGinley. Or is it just John McGinley? I always get John C. McGinley and John C. Riley confused. Let's double check this. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> we need to be con- I remember you talking about a show with... So yeah, it's John C. McGinley. <clears throat> so she was in the show with John C. McGinley uh, called Stan Against Evil. And John C. McGinley plays Stan. I think that's the show you're uh, that I told you about. Okay. So, definitely, this is like a a, a real fucking smorgasbord of, of talent right here. I'm only through the first so where, two. Where can two you like find this? Where can you find the show at? You can find it anywhere. Um, Spotify is where I was listening to it. Okay. Um, it's called Dark Air with Terry Carnation. So if you just Google it, Google that name. 
There's a website. Let's see. Yeah, it's a free sh- free thing to listen to, right? Yes. It's a free show. Yes. Okay. Um, they sneak in advertisements. Well, yeah, for obvious reasons. No, I mean, they literally sneak in our advertisements. Oh, in the show, you yes. mean? Yes. So instead oh, of doing okay, commercial okay, breaks, like, there's, like, the end of the first episode, um, uh, uh, Terry Carnation's arguing with his therapist, and he's like, you know, it's, it's, you know, it sounds like you want my special brand of undercore, uh, underwear called MeUndies, and they're an actual brand. I, I Googled it. And he goes on for, like, 20, 25 seconds explaining like, how MeUndies are great, and the therapist goes, uh, Terry, it's did you just do an ad break in the middle of our therapy session? <laughs> <laughs> so like, okay. It, yeah. It, it fits. I, it, I'm so in. So uh, it's on podcast on Apple audio boom. Uh, let's see. Here's the website. Terrycarnation.com. I'm going to send you the, uh, the fucking URL. Cause it's fucking, the website's fantastic. <laughs> Straight out of 2001. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's so good. I like how he plays. I like how he does like a fake name, dude. You know what I mean? Like it's great. That's well, just great. Well, he's playing a character, so obviously he has a fake name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, how you how he just disguised it has his own website, and just, that's this is cool. I like the idea. So you can listen to it on. It'll take you to audioboom.com directly, but it's also uh, here. It is. Uh, you can also get it on Apple Podcasts. If you have an RSS feed, Spotify, Amazon Music, Castbox, Deezer, iHeart, Geo Savan, Listen Notes, Player FM, Podcast Act, Pod Chaser, Radio Public, Stitcher, and TuneIn. I would suggest um, Spotify because I don't think you need a, 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 any type of login. Uh, Stitcher is also pretty good for it if, if you want to do that route. I stay away from Apple products in general, but most of these mm. I think are free. So, Okay. Yeah, there's, without question, I'll, I'll get on that. There's eight episodes. <clears throat> I'm only on two. I, I did the the returning and crosswires. Then there's truth dump. Mule be sorry. No money. Fewer problems. How deep state is your love? That's correct. I that's a good name. <laughs> mm. Fame be a fickle mistress. So those are the ones that are out. I think there's twelve for the season. They release once a week. So. I fucking love this website. It's so dumb. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. So, anything else? <clears throat> no, I'm pretty much all set, man. Stay away from the new song, Build a Bitch. It's too goddamn catchy. It'll stay in your ear. It's not even a good song. It's not. Just stay away from it. It's bad. It's bad for your just house. one of those. An- just one of those anno- just annoying songs that just gets in your head anyway. Yep. Yeah, you'll listen to it for 30 seconds and be like, I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have did it. I've listened to it five times. I don't even, I, I don't know who this chick is. Her name is like Pond or something like that. It just, it, this song's not good. It's poorly written, but the, the catchy, the, her, the way her, because I told you, I'm, I'm very much an auditory guy. Like certain mm-hmm. sounds really tingle my senses. And, her, and the, like, the way she kind of like whisper raps, I guess is the best way to describe it, hits me mm-hmm. in a way that she, I wish it didn't. Like she's not, she's not gonna fucking blow you away with her singing voice, but she's not terrible. So, I don't know. Listen to it at your own risk. It's already got twenty eight million uh, listeners, and it just came out yesterday. <laughs> oh Jesus! I uh, yeah, that sounds like something that I would regret almost instantly. Yeah, but you're gonna listen to it because you're intrigued. I know you are. I Real, don't want to. I really don't. RealNerdCorp.com. R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P.com. We're on Twitter. at N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P on Instagram at RealNerdCorp. Matt, you can be found where? At, uh, on Twitch at MNerdCorp. Same handle on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at Chad NerdCorp. C-H-A-D-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. And on Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. Wait, did I finish? C-H-A-D-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. Chad NerdCorp. That's my Twitter. And then the website is, again, is uh, NerdCorp. N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. And my personal Instagram is Chad's Photo Hut. We will be back, twitch.tv backslash real nerd corp. That is correct. Okay. <laughs> Next week for another edition of our show. Um, maybe. I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> you are on the ball tonight, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. So for Matt, I'm Chad. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for giving us a chance. And as always, trust Terry Carnation. Matt, take us home. 
Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week.